come to the charismatic hour of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. This is a time that has been arranged by the Lord to build in faith, to build in insight into the lives of uh, the people who come to him so as to be able to take care of all the troubles of this life at every turn in this life. And I pray that uh, you open your heart very wide to receive the word of the Lord and to allow insight and faith be built inside you so that you can benefit maximally from what the Lord has packaged. Now we are wrapping up, that is uh, summarizing the message we began a couple of weeks back titled, What's a Big Deal? It's no big deal. I would plead with you that you pay attention and then gather whatsoever that you need to gather because life is not uh, very easy to live. The devils have not been uh, finally consigned into the place of punishment forever. Meanwhile, they are operating in the heavenlies and on earth, and then and human beings are the worst for that. Therefore, you are expected to know this and then take advantage of the provisions of the Almighty God to take care of all the uh, maneuvers or to overcome the maneuvers of the wicked one. Now, before we launch uh, deep into what we have, as is usual with us, let's join our music team right away so that we can take uh, inspiration through the songs that we will begin to sing. I will want you to watch uh, the lines or see the lines of the song on the screen and join with all your heart.
tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. All is changed when Jesus comes to stay. This is real. This is fantastic. This is not good talk. As we have always said unto the people that have ever joined in the ministry of the word of God and prayer by the spirit of God at the hand of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Wherever you are, take note of this particular hour and then begin to call upon the name of the Lord even for the now. Get you prepared for the word that will bring inspiration, that will bring faith, that will bring insight and bring confidence. And then you will be the best for what will happen unto you when you take advantage as you have been enjoined. Open your mouth wherever you are, in the house, in fellowship center, wherever, or you are traveling and you have tuned in and you are listening Open your mouth to call upon the name of the Lord. Remember that he says, Ask and he shall receive, seek and he shall find. Nor can he shall be opened unto you. The principle of God is, You call on me, I answer you. You have time for me, I have time for you. You abandon me, I abandon you. You draw nigh, I draw nigh. That is his way. We bless your name, Heavenly Father. Because of a time like this, usual with you, Lord, in glory to do marvelous things in the midst of the people through your word and your spirit. Here we come again to discuss this uh, fantastic uh, subject matter to conclude our discourse. Eternal rock of ages on the matter that is not a big deal. It does not present any difficulty at all whatsoever we come to do with, whatsoever be the circumstance of our lives. I thank you because it doesn't matter the magnitude of the circumstance or the duration of the circumstance. Nothing is a big deal. It's not something that we scratch our heads about. Precious Father, given your power, given your almightiness, given your faithfulness, Given your ability, given your wisdom, Lord, is it not written in the scripture that cannot be broken all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God? How unsearchable are your judgments and your ways past finding out? Do I boon your counsel? I bless your name, Lord, in glory, because at this point in time, something is said to happen in the lives of the people across the world, wherever they are listening unto this uh, word of God this time. Thank you very much. Because all over the world, the Spirit of God is moving according to the prophecy of old. The Spirit of God is moving in North and South America. The Spirit of God is moving in Asia. The Spirit of God is moving in all Africa. The Spirit of God is moving in Nigeria. The Spirit of God is moving in the UK and moving in all Europe. Bless the Redeemer, far east, near east, wherever men are found, the islands. The Spirit of God is moving and is doing wonders, convicting, converting people of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. And then bringing about the goodies of the Lord unto all that are listening and believe the word of God. But I thank you for answer to prayers this time around, as is born always. Because we have made our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the coming King. And amen, and amen, and amen. Welcome you back to the charismatic hour of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. As I've already said, we are wrapping up, we are summarizing the things that we have been saying over the period for at least uh, three or four sessions now 
on the subject matter is not a big deal or what is a big deal and then I'm going to straight away inform you of uh, what uh, that uh, uh, question is or that statement is not a big deal not a big deal means uh, it's not anything that anybody should scratch his head about I'll give you an illustration you come to somebody that has uh, the way with all Come to somebody that has mercy. Come to somebody that has the resources of this life and you are saying, I want you to help me with some money. I have uh, some need in my life and I want to attend to the need. And the person says, my friend, not a big deal. I'm capable. I can do whatever you want me to do. It doesn't present any difficulty with me. Count it down. That is what we are saying in essence. And whatsoever anybody is bringing before the Lord, the Lord of heaven and earth, is not a matter really. It could be a matter for the person, but it's not a matter for God. It's not an issue. It does not take him plenty of uh, thinking and plenty of scratching of head and plenty of uh, encumbering the mind or as to what to do. He knows what to do, so he can just uh, blink his eye and say, you go here where the matter is taken care of. That's what we are talking about. And uh, at this point in time, I'm wrapping it up. I am summarizing so that we can go to some other wonderful things that are awaiting us. It's not a big deal, what are you ask? Are you looking for salvation? Salvation is that... Your sins are forgiven at a point in time because you confess your sins and then you repented of your sins and you rejected them and made up your mind that by the grace of God, you're not going to return to those sins again. And then you place your faith on the vicarious death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, remembering that he died for sinners, didn't die for himself. And then you manifest faith, and then your name is written in the book of life, and your sins are forgiven. Not just forgiven, but uh, forgotten, notwithstanding the magnitude of that sinful life. Listen to me. You may be the vilest of offenders, but the Lord says, that, uh, by the blood of the Lamb, by cleansing the vilest of offenders. So, if it is forgiveness that you are looking for, it's not a big deal. If it is uh, that you are coming to the Lord and saying to him, I want you to avenge me of my adversary, uh, the lot of trouble, I am incapacitated, and there is a lot of trouble here and there. The devil is from the one side, and human beings who are agents of, of the devil are from the other side, and they are uh, encumbering me night and day. I don't sleep. And I don't, I don't sleep. Every now and again, I am pressed. Every now and again, I dream terrible dreams. And they take me down to the waterbed. And they take me up. And then they mesmerize my mind. And you are coming to the Lord and saying, this is me. I am incapacitated. And the Lord is saying, it's not a big deal. It's not a matter as far as I am concerned. Or... You have a house that is broken. Marriage is broken. Family is broken. Like families are broken in these days. Completely broken. Many families are broken. But somebody is coming to the Lord and say, Lord, I cannot accommodate this. I want you to patch up. I want you to amend. Even though it looks like it's a broken bottle that's not amendable. But uh, the Lord is saying, I know what to do. I know what to do. It's not a big deal. So that's what we're saying. Or are you running at crossroads? You come to crossroads and you do not know which way to take. You are confused. And then in the world filled with confusion, you are confused. And you are saying, what is this life all about? Why was I born for that matter? And you are Sorrowful all the time, night and day, you have no joy in your heart. 
And then you are wanting to have a, a life that is meaningful. And the Lord is saying it's not a big deal. Now, why are we saying that uh, whatever be the matter you are presenting is not a big deal? We are saying that because of what we know concerning him. And so let me go to scriptures to tell you some things that are true concerning him. And when you know these things, then you are in for blessing. You are the best for knowing them. It's not a big deal because, one, go to Psalm 24. Psalm 24 and verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the whole universe is the Lord's, and the fullness therein. All them that dwell on the surface of the earth are under his jurisdiction. And so, the earth being his, and the fullness, the fullness of everything being his, the fullness of the seas, and the fullness of the oceans, the fullness of things seen and things not seen. They are his. So, from what is his, I can, I can give you what belongs to you, what you are looking for. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. The earth that we see and all them that dwell therein. Meaning that he can use anything that uh, is in this earth. To come to your aid. That's what it means. Can use anything that is on the surface of the earth or under the earth because everything belongs to him. And I give you an illustration. If you come to somebody that owns uh, some facility and a lot of uh, a lot of houses, and then in a city, and then a lot of it for that matter, and you are looking for accommodation, you want him to give you an apartment in one of the places in the city, and he tells you I have plenty of apartments, and then it's not a big deal, and he assigns one to you. Will you not be the better for it? That is uh, how you want to understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So out of what belongs to him, he can give to whosoever that he wants to give. He can satisfy the need of anybody that is in need. Remember that uh, the last outing we talked about the miraculous provisions of the Lord, how he provides miraculously out of his uh, abundance. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But apart from that, can I tell you this? Not only the earth which we see and the fullness thereof which we see, but you know that the kingdoms belong unto the Lord, the things that are not seen, the other kingdoms there. The kingdom of light as well as the kingdom of darkness. They belong unto him. They don't belong unto Satan. They don't belong unto Satan. Listen to me. When Satan says, said to Jesus Christ, all the things have been given to me of all the kingdoms, he was lying. He was a usurper. Somebody that comes around and says that everything that belongs to you belongs now has belonged to me, but there was no time you see that those things onto the person. That person is not a liar. The person is a bloody liar. So, even though Jesus Christ at a point in time called him the prince of this world, prince of this world is, uh, is uh, a title, and uh, it's because he dropped it, and then some sons of men, in their ignorance, agreed that he should be their ruler. It's not that uh, he is altogether the owner of uh, the heavens and the earth and everything we see and the things that we don't see. Let me show you that uh, every other place, every other kingdom is the Lord. In Matthew's gospel, we are reading from chapter 6. In the prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ taught, he says in verse 9, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thine is the kingdom. Not just the kingdom of life, but the kingdom of darkness and the power. Listen to this. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it for emphasis. Power belongs to God. God has spoken once, and uh, the prophet, the writer said, and twice have I heard uh, that thing for emphasis. Power belongs to God. God is in charge of the powers, and he owns the powers. The kingdoms belong unto him. And so, out of what belongs to him, he satisfies the need of anybody that comes unto him. That's what we're saying. So, there is no matter you are bringing, that is a big deal. Now, Let's further prove that the kingdoms belong unto him. As we read from the prophet Daniel, Daniel, we're reading the fourth chapter of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4, I'm reading uh, information from the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And uh, he was relating the dream, and in verse 17, he says, This matter is by the decree of the washers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. The Lord is the one that rules in the kingdom of men. And in every kingdom for that man, I'm going to show you that. Now, in verse 25, that is repeated, which is stated in verse 17. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and the seven times seven years shall pass over thee. Did thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will? Now in verse 32, still a repetition, when Daniel was interpreting the dream. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass, as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know. But the most I rule it in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will. Now listen to verse 35. And all the inhabitants, this is now the testimony of Nebuchadnezzar, when the thing will have had come upon him and God had restored him. Now in his testimony he has this to say. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he dwelt according to his will in the armies of heaven. The army of heaven is inclusive of the two thirds of the angels of God that are obedient and loyal, and uh, one third of the former angels of the Lord that went into rebellion with uh, Lucifer. God is still ruling in those armies and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand that is, stop him or say unto him, What doest thou? Thou. Now let's uh, go to confirm more of the fact that uh, God is in charge of the kingdoms. From Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, we read verse 20, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come. Jesus Christ put far above, being far above, above all, above all in wisdom, above all in power, above all in 
in, in whatever, both all in understanding, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God, personified. And so because of that, now the Lord has the overall say in any matter that uh, you bring to him, any matter, any difficulties, any troubles that the enemy, the devils have engineered and brought you away, I want you to know that he that is in charge of the kingdoms has uh, every power, has uh, the mechanism, has uh, whatsoever it takes in order to take care of the something that is come unto you. That is what we are showing. In Colossians chapter 2, we read verse 9 and verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of God, of the Godhead bodily, that is in Christ. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Jesus Christ is the head of all principality and power. Not because he is involved in the thing that these uh, powers of darkness are involved in. He is their head because uh, he is the one that, uh, by whom all things we are made. Even though they are not in the same business, but he is the one that says stop, and the person will stop. I inform you of this fact, this truth, and you should know it and be glad for knowing it. Satan does not have all the power. I say that again. Satan does not have all the power. Many people are afraid of him because they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. They refuse to know the depths of Satan. And so when they have problems, they will want to consult the witch doctor. They will want to consult the necromancer. They will want to consult the, the, the people that are into uh, practices that are bizarre, things that are not acceptable unto the Lord. They will want to consult people that are into satanism. Because they know not that the Lord is in charge. But if any person knows that the Lord is in charge, he will not make consultation with the occult person. Now listen to me. The Lord has said, woe unto the person that goes unto these other people, goes to Egypt to seek help. I am the Lord, he said. So, we are telling everybody that has ears to hear that God is saying concerning your matter is not a big deal because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the heaven of heavens are his, are his. And so, he can now use what he has. Now, the other reason is that everything being his, he cannot make use of what belongs to him to attend to you. Please, listen to this. And let it brew faith. And let it brew insight inside your heart. Did you tell me that you are a child of God? And you are afraid of the night because of the dreams that pictures that are fired to your mind, to your subconscious mind in the night sessions of dream, and then you dreamt a dream and found yourself that you were being pursued. You dreamt a dream and found that the snake was pursuing you and beat you. And then you dreamt a dream and found that somebody fired a shot from the gun at you. And then the thing hit your hand or hit your waist. And then when you woke up, when you woke up from the dream, you began to pant. You began to quake. You began to say, they have killed me. You began to say they have killed me. I'm not going to live long. You are doing that because of ignorance. Let me tell you about dreams a little. Dreams are just uh, movies. Now you find yourself running. You didn't run. You were lying on your bed. You didn't run. What you saw was uh, an image of you which they painted. And then they were the dramatists. The devils are the dramatists. And then they took your image and began to run. And then the other one began to uh, take the image of a dog or take the image of a pursuer, a soldier with gun. And then they shot poor. And then, but because you are cut off from this realm and then you are alive in the other realm, then you thought it was you. And by some telepathy, then the thing has effect on you. And now you came up and began to shiver. 
and then you, that you can even sense some hotness in the place where the bullet uh, entered. But the bullet didn't enter anything. That's photo trick. Now, if you know that the Lord is in charge, if you know that the Lord is in charge, and you are knowing it today, you will just say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No tongue that rises up against me, I will not condemn, for the heritage of the Lord is mine. This is the heritage of the, of the Lord, and the righteousness of me, said the Lord. That is the point. Now, God has everything at his disposal. He is the owner of everything, and he uses whatsoever that is at his disposal to take care of the problems of his people. This is real, period. Listen to that. Did you tell me that you came into the kingdom and then the next moment you said, I am a Job. You are lying. You are lying. You are a Job because uh, you lost one child. You didn't lose all your children. You are a Job because you had uh, some illness uh, uh, bedeviling you and, uh, and then, uh, but you are going about with the illness, going about some business, and going about even this way and that way, and still going to school, and you say you are a Job. Job did not go anywhere when the affliction came unto him. So don't say that you are a Job. Don't destroy yourself with your mouth. Rather, build up yourself with your mouth. The Lord has the ability, even if you are a Job to some extent, listen to me, right now you are a Job to some extent. Maybe to some 60%, maybe to some 50%. I want to tell you that God is going to bring you out of the Jewish condition because he has the ability. Everything is at his disposal. He owns everything. God has all the things that are in this realm and in the other realms. In Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, and we are reading verse uh, 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who had known the mind of the Lord or who had been his counselor? The riches of God are immeasurable. The uh, facilities that the Lord has the resources that are at the disposal of the Lord are immeasurable. We wish he can attend to anyone, anyone's matter. That is the point we are making. Not only that, that uh, he, he knows he has all the things, but he can use whatsoever he has in order to do whatsoever he wants to do. And that is the reason we have uh, all those pieces of uh, manifestations uh, that the Lord had with the sons of men in times past. Um, can I tell you concerning uh, the man called uh, Elijah, the prophet, after that he had gone to announce the chastisement that God brought unto Israel, before Ahab, you know that the raven fed him for some while, and then when the brook dried, and then God sent him to a widow woman, and then there, God multiplied the little meal that the woman had that was finishing. And the thing didn't finish. God is the person that uses everything that is available to him to do us good. Yes. And if he did the people of old good, he does us good today. God is the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the case of Elijah further on, we find that when he was altogether uh, discouraged, when he was altogether incapacitated, he was at his wit's end. And the Lord sent an angel to give him food and to give him water that fortified him, that gave him all the nutrients that he required for a long journey and uh, the last lap of his ministry. The Lord knows that you are taking a long journey right now, lady, widow, widower, and uh, the childless individual, and somebody that may have uh, uh, been in prison and you just came out from prison, and now you cannot uh, find anything to do, but you want to fit into the society, 
And you are saying, I don't want to go back into evil uh, because they preached to me in the prison and then I gave my life to Jesus. But now I've come out and I, I don't know where to start. Listen to me, start with Jesus. You begin to call upon him even from this hour, telling him from what you are hearing that you own the world and then you have all the resources, the resources that, we are, that are seen and the resources that are not seen. The spiritual resources and the physical resources, the angels belong to him and he can use them and he does use them. I inform you that uh, he has the resource not just of angels but he has the resource of his spirit. His spirit is an intelligible being and his spirit is a gynecologist. His spirit is uh, an oncologist. The spirit of God is everything. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me, the person that is talking to you has experience and has a, a testimony. The spirit of God is a being. The spirit of God is a being for a hard time. I'll tell testimonies upon testimonies as well. The spirit of the Lord even made me know he's a being and, uh, and changed the circumstance, the hell situations of my, of my life. For good, for that matter, the spirit of God is an is an instrument in the hand of God. Even the blood of Jesus, even the, the God has a lot of uh, instrument, a lot of resources at his disposal to take care of whatsoever anybody has. And so, you don't need to get bewildered anymore from this hour. At any point in time, but anything happens, you know what you will remember? It's not a big deal as far as God is concerned. It's not a big deal. You know what you need to do this day? What you need to do is to, to, to ensure that from time to time you are reflecting on what you have heard. You are saying, it's not a big deal. God is marvelous. God cares. The songwriter said, does Jesus care? He said, he cares. He cares, surely. Does God care? Bible tells us that we should carry all our matters unto him because he cares for us. But that is the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Father, Father, glorify your son. So if you are a child of God, remember that God in heaven is a better father than your biological father. You are a better uncle than your biological uncle. Remember that God is who he is. And then he is willing to help you. And he has the capability and the way with all to help you. And so, from this hour, you begin to know that. Develop that mindset. That's what you need. Now, we look at uh, a few persons that develop that mindset. And then, and they please God and they had uh, great, great blessings are from the Lord whom they please. I want to look at uh, this forerunner of Christianity by name of uh, Enoch. Now let's read what happened concerning Enoch. Now in Genesis chapter 5 and verse uh, 18, and Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and began sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God took him. Listen to me, and to what is stated concerning Enoch. What happened that uh, God should be so pleased and then metamorphose him into heaven at a point in time? Let's see what happened as we read from Hebrews chapter 11. We're reading from verse... Uh, Five. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death 
and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. What is it that he did that uh, uh, made him to have this testimony of pleasing God? He believed in God. He had faith in God. He did not uh, diminish the Lord. There are very many people that uh, diminish the Lord. When circumstances come their way, they diminish the Lord and exhaust Satan. But uh, that is to the detriment of such people. You ought not to be like that. You don't diminish the Lord. This man magnified the Lord. And therefore, he pleased the Lord. What he did pleased the Lord. The same thing with Abraham. Abraham was, uh, was uh, 75 years old or even uh, above 75 years old at the point in time that he was talked to about uh, having a child, even a son. And the Bible says he believed the Lord. Believed the Lord and then it was counted for him for righteousness. So what do we do? What you do is at every point in time, uh, make sure that you, you let your heart grow into having faith in the Lord at every turn of life, no matter how dangerous, no matter how cold, no matter the matter the the sharpness of the tone, no matter the coverture of the tone, no matter the magnitude of the problem, you begin to say to yourself, say to yourself, the Lord is able, if it is that uh, you made a mistake as a child of God and got into some error, I want to tell you that uh, we have an advocate, and the name of that advocate is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You plead your case, Lord, you died on the cross for me. Forgive this transgression and, for, and remember it no more. And if you are repentant, it will be so with you. Now, for whatsoever thing that anybody requires, we want to say to that individual, it's not a big deal. Given what is available to God, given who the Lord is, your Lord is to ensure that you are one of the people that believe the Lord. Don't believe in yourself. Don't believe in some other person. You cannot do anything. We are of all men most miserable if we don't have the Lord. May I tell you this? And that is even a message that is going to come proper. It's going to come out with a bang. And what is the title of the message? If Abraham was dust and ashes. Let me give you a little insight. The man that saw and realized that, that these were heavenly visitors. The man that had a child at the age of 100. The promised child. The man that God spoke to one on one. The man that raised a, a, a few people in his household and they pursued armies of, uh, of nations and defeated them. That same man Said, I am dust and ashes. Now, let me tell you, all these other people that are parambulating and saying that they are something, what are they? You answer. What are they? A man that saw God, a man that God used, a man that obeyed God, a man that was singled out, a man that had the insight, a man through whom a nation was built, and that nation is still enjoying the goodies from this man. At a point, said, I am dust and ashes. Now, the other people that are just uh, going about and claiming this and claiming that, I do not know how to describe them. They should describe themselves. Now, but what is the lesson we are learning from that? We are, the lesson we are learning is that you should realize that you are incapacitated. Of all men, we are miserable if we do not trust in the Lord. If you do not have uh, the Lord as your anchor, of all men and women, you are most miserable. You ought not to be born. The reason is this. At the end of life, when everything that fascinates, when everything will now dim out, when the gold will no more be golden, when the pleasure is now very nauseating, what are you going to do at that time? It is only the people that have this knowledge 
and that are following the Lord, uh, even in the things that we are saying, that, uh, that, make their, that make their anchor, the Lord, the people that, uh, that have time for him, they are the real persons of this earth. And so we encourage you to be one of the real persons of this earth. The real men and the real women and the real boys and the real girls of this earth. By realizing that um, with him there is no cause for alarm. With Jesus Christ there is no cause for alarm. With God there is no cause for alarm. He is the owner of the universe. He owns everything. And not only that, he has, a, he has the ability to use whatever that he owns to attend to every situation. Every circumstance means every circumstance. So right now, whatsoever circumstance you find yourself, or whatsoever circumstance that you are likely to find yourself in the future, remember what you are hearing. As the song leaders, as our music ministry returns, to sing, but I do not know today what tomorrow may bring. Listen to it and join. I do not know today what tomorrow may bring, but one thing I am sure about is that God can do everything but fail. That is fantastic. Listen to the music and then join in it. I do not know today what tomorrow may bring. Tomorrow may bring uh, something that is not good, but tomorrow, whatever it brings, uh, all you need to know is that this matter is not a big deal. You want to ensure that uh, you are such an individual that can hook to God. It's not every person that can hook to God. If somebody is making a practice of sin and wants to live in the sin and die in the sin, the person cannot benefit from what we are saying because uh, God, uh, God has sin and God is angry with the sinner every day of his life. That's what the Bible says. But if somebody is repenting and then he's saying, I don't want to continue this way. I want to be one of those people that trust in the Lord and know that nothing is a big deal as far as the Lord is concerned. Now, that individual will benefit from all the things that, that he is hearing. I pray that the Lord will grant into the heart of every person that has listened insight and faith so that in the course of time, you will be full of testimony saying, Come and see what the Lord has done. I want you to join our music team as we sing this song. As I'm singing, you are praying, and I'm praying for you. I know not today what tomorrow may bring, but one thing I know that I'm sure about is that God can do anything, everything but fail.
as a redeemer, thank you. Because uh, the spirit of the Lord is uh, moving all over the world. Wherever the sons of men are found. And their word has gone out and does not return to the void. It will accomplish that for which you have sent it. I thank you because I see it happening. That's where you have pronounced it. And nothing can stand even before it. Thank you because in that day of restoration of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he said he doeth everything, even in the midst of the sons of men and, and the sons of uh, uh, men and the demons, and no one can say unto him, what doest thou? Nobody has the power to say unto thee, what do I do? Nobody can stop the Lord. A ten a rock of ages, nobody can stop the Lord. There is not any, um, anything that has been schemed by the wicked one against the people that listen to the voice of the word of the Lord that I will be able to succeed. The Lord is who he is. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and all them that dwell therein. Jesus Christ, the head of principalities and powers, and there is no power but he is. We bless your name because I know that your spirit is walking, using your word at this point in time. There is not anything that you cannot do. The only thing you cannot do is to lie. Take advantage of everything. The resources are with you, spiritual resources. The angels are there. And every instrument is there. You can even use demons to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. And nobody says unto thee, what doest thou? Thank you very much. We bless your name for answer to prayers. Because we make our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus, the coming King. Amen and amen and amen.